Still on agriculture, on our first set of segment this week, Laban Cliff on Sario caught up with Dr. Susan Mwangi, Managing Director Sassini Limited, a listed agriculture stock on the Nairobi Bowls for insights on this sector. Dr. Susan, many thanks for joining us on the program. Take us through your performance for the first quarter of 2013, especially seeing that last year you reported an operating loss of 67.8 million. Uh, the first quarter of 2013, um, if I'm to compare it to the first quarter of 2011, I could confidently say it is a better quarter. And the main reason it's a better quarter is because the rainfall patterns have been much more positive than the previous year. Right? In the previous year, we experienced more or less total drought in the first three months of the year. But uh, this year, it has definitely been much better than the previous quarter. We've had rainfall. Uh, I wouldn't say we've had sufficient rainfall. We've seen a little bit of a drop in the rainfall, which we expected, but it has not been as dry as it was in the, f in, in the, in the first quarter last year. Okay? So this is positive because the tea, for example, business, uh, the tea farming requires uh, continuous precipitation, continuous rainfall. And uh, we, even if we have a slight dip in, in, in production from the farms, it will not be as severe as it was in the previous year. So I think it's more positive. If we look at the price front, uh, the first quarter again, if we look at coffee prices, the prices have been lower than the, uh, have been fairly, fairly uh, low. Tea prices have been fairly stable, so I wouldn't say they're, they're, uh, uh, there's any problem there, but they've been fairly steady. You operate a largely rain-fed business. Now that the long rains are actually here, how are you hoping to tap into this? Yeah, well, when the long, long rains come, uh, the main thing is we see uh, increase in production of tea because uh, with increased rainfall, then we see uh, the, what we call the flush, the, the, the tea leaves uh, really grow. And uh, we find that we operate at full capacity in our, in our, in our tea factories. Okay? And that is very good for us uh, because we always want to maximize the capacity utilization on the tea side. That is what is key for us. We have two tea factories and uh, we're able to, to grow at full capacity. We can, we, can, we can produce possibly 10, 11 million kilograms per year. 10 to 11 million kilograms per year. Now, whenever we lose capacity because of drought or anything like that, we lose that entire capacity, which we cannot recover in subsequent months because we've got a limitation on, on, the, on the capacity of the factory. So I think the rainfall is going to help us as we go into the rainfall. Of course, when there is a, a higher production, then you might find the prices may dip slightly, uh, but we hope that we can, they will not dip too much and uh, they will be able to sustain the, the fairly good levels we saw in the previous year. Uh, on the coffee side, um, we have periods when we require very little rainfall. In the early part of the year, like now, we do not require too much rainfall in coffee. So the, 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 the dry weather is good for us. Uh, and also in the dry weather, if we, need ra if we need water in the coffee farms, we're able to irrigate. Of course, it's expensive to irrigate, but we're able to irrigate coffee. But we're not able to irrigate tea because the land is too expensive and it would be very expensive. Let's touch on tea production, which actually accounts for 70% of your bottom line. Kenya is still lagging behind in value addition of our CTC black tea. Why is this so? In fact, your observation is correct. Uh, Kenya is falling behind in value addition. And of course, the question that is always asked is, why is this? Okay? When you talk of value addition, you're saying that we want to brand and package our tea locally and then sell it, uh, not only locally, but internationally, because the local market is very, very small. So we would like to export it. Now, if we look at our electricity costs in this country, they're among the highest in the, in, in, in the continent. If we look at our transport costs, they're among the highest. Our fuel costs are very high, which means that our packaging material, our, uh, our cost of labor, all that will add to the cost of the final product. Now, if we try and export a final product that is too expensive, it will not be able to compete internationally. And that is the disadvantage that we have. Okay? It is that simple. So it is easier and cheaper and more feasible for us to simply pack the tea in 60 kilogram bags, send it off to the countries which need the tea, and then they pack in their own brands. Right? You realize there is no barrier to entry for packaging of tea in, uh, internationally. There is no barrier to entry. So anybody can package it, and it is best packaged at the source close to the market. Okay? Economically, it makes more sense. You're also opting for direct tea sales over and above the auction at the Mombasa port. Why is this so? The reason for that is that um, at the auctions we fetch a certain price, right? With direct sales, we have uh, an average auction price plus we load a margin. And we load a margin simply because uh, we are trying to mitigate any risk of future loss 
because we are diverting teas from the auction. And at the auction, uh, at some stage, you can easily get a price spike. And if you miss that opportunity, uh, you lose the money. So we always load a margin. Uh, and also, we are giving the buyer certainty that they will get the tea that they want as a first preference. So for that first preference they are getting, we load a margin for them. And that is good for us and good for them. So if we can increase our higher margin sales, then we increase our bottom line. That is the whole basic idea behind our, our, our drive to, to increase direct sales. You're also looking to diversify into dairy farming. However, current milk prices are actually averaging for 40 shillings for every half a litre packet. What opportunity are you seeing in this? Yeah, uh, you see with um, milk, there are two options. You've got the uh, just selling the milk directly, or you can sell a value-added product like yogurt, uh, which has slightly better margins. Of course, the volume of yogurt sold nationally is, is less than the milk. In fact, I think 80-90% uh, of, of, of milk products are sold in milk form, and the balance, 10-15%, is probably sold in value-added form, like yogurt and cheese and those kind of things. But those, I, those, those uh, value-added products have got better margins. And we are of the view that if we could go for those higher value products, we could open up our margins and increase our profitability. Right now we are selling raw milk uh, to, to, to dairies and they are going on to process. We, we do a bit of processing at a, very, at a, very, at a fairly uh, small level in central Kenya, but we are, we, we are considering expanding that. And hopefully as we expand that, we reap better economies of scale and uh, we increase our top line and our bottom line uh, profitability. So this is going to be a lucrative venture for you? Well, we, we have looked at it and said that if we are producing at a higher scale, because of the economies of scale, we should be making better margins and better money, you know, because we're having higher volumes. So we're in the process of, of improving our production. We've uh, gone into the animal husbandry to increase our milk yields per cow uh, through uh, zero grazing. We used to let them graze in the, in, the, in, the, in the range, but now we're bringing them into the zero grazing unit. And we've seen our milk yields increase. And as we increase the number of animals we have then, we increase the volume of, of milk and we're able to process that. Lastly, Dr. Mwangi, the government has recently introduced a 3 billion fertilizer subsidy to farmers. Do you think this is incentive enough for, to encourage farmers into doing business? Yeah, well, we hope that uh, uh, the use of fertilizer is going to increase because accessibility, by reducing the costs, by um, introducing a subsidy, what you're saying is it will be more affordable. So farmers should be able to buy that subsidized fertilizer and uh, produce better yields and uh, on top of that, uh, you know, improve their, the viability of their farming activities. And uh, we are hoping to access this um, and the farmers who are our, grow our outgrowers also should be able to access it and hopefully this will spur uh, in increased agricultural productivity in the country. So it's aimed at improving agricultural productivity and because we are farmers, we, we hope we will benefit from this.